Astrophotography can be a very expensive hobby, but not today, because today I'm going to be using a 200 pound telescope I bought from AliExpress to image the night sky and even capture some jaw dropping videos of our brightest planets. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. 200 pounds really does not get you much in astrophotography, but thanks to a rather suspiciously looking off-brand listing, I've gone ahead and purchased a five inch Celestron telescope. Now purchasing a seemingly off-brand telescope from a Chinese website is always going to be a bit of a gamble, but I've gambled with unknown products from AliExpress before and it's paid dividends. So I'm eager to give this a shot. It arrived with a Nexstar Evolution branding plate, indicating that this is the same telescope used in the very pricey go-to mount setup. Except, you know, without the mount, this is 1,000 pounds cheaper. P.S. If you're looking for a really good mount for excellent value, check out my other video on the Jouet 14 and Jouet 17 mounts, which are pound for pound the best value mounts on the market. Now naturally, the first object I was going to test the telescope on was going to be our big old lunar companion, the moon. As you can see for yourself, it's doing a very impressive job. This is one of my favourite times to observe the moon, between 50 to 75 percent illumination is the sweet spot. You really get a sense of depth about it thanks to the sunlight casting these huge shadows across the craters and mountains. Mountains. Zooming in on the footage and increasing the sharpness makes it look even better. But the moon is a relatively beginner target. I want to really push the limits of the scope. So how about pointing it towards the red planet, Mars? If you're wondering why the footage is so wobbly and fuzzy, well that's largely down to our own atmosphere. This is what gives stars their twinkling effect. One way to eradicate this is to take lots and lots of video frames and stack a small percentage of the best quality shots to create a much sharper final image. We'll do that shortly, but for now, the main change I want to make is to add a 3 times Barlow lens. This makes it much easier for me to resolve the planet without having to reduce the resolution of my video. You can now just about make out the Martian surface detail. Perhaps you can even note the different shades of colour, a contrasting red and brown. Now we can take this one huge step further. I'm now going to record lots and lots of videos of Mars for two hours. Each video will be precisely three minutes long. I'm then going to input this video into a free planetary stacking software and tell to stack the best 30% of my images, which doesn't sound like much, but it's actually taking about 50 pictures per second. And once that's done, I'm going to aggressively sharpen the image to reveal as much detail as possible. And then this is the really mind-blowingly cool part. I'm going to play each of my newly stacked and sharpened pictures back to back to make this. A short looping video of the red planet rotating on its axis. Now a Martian day is precisely 24 hours, 39 minutes and 35 seconds, which isn't much longer than it is here on Earth. So over the short time period that I've been imaging the planet, we can see it rotate. The super cool part is that thanks to our new sharpening techniques, we can actually see the Martian polar ice caps. That right there is where the Martian Santa Claus lives. Or actually, I think the image might be inverted. So really, that right there might be where the Martian penguins live. Either way, insane levels of details to be made out with a 200 pound telescope. But we were only at the halfway stage of this video and I always save the very best till last. It's time for us to level up and go after the god of all planets, Jupiter. Despite being roughly three and a half times further away on average from the Earth than Mars, Jupiter is still significantly better than Mars through our telescope and reveals a whole lot more detail. Even with the unaided eye or our raw footage here, you can clearly see Jupiter's distinct atmospheric bands running around the planet. But the truly jaw-dropping aspect is that whenever you look at Jupiter for a telescope, you always see these faint points of light dancing around it. These are not in fact stars, they are four of Jupiter's largest moons, the Galilean moons. They were discovered by Stephen Hawking himself. Nah, I'm, I'm kidding. They were discovered by Galileo Galilei. Each of them shines brighter in our night sky than the planet Uranus. How crazy is that? You won't always see all four simply due to the fact that sometimes they are orbiting behind Jupiter, but I tell you what, how cool would it be to see not only the gas giant Jupiter rotating on its axis, but also the motion of these moons as they dance around it. I've now taken one hour's worth of three minute recordings in order to produce a time lapse of the planet and moons, which I know what you're thinking, that's not as long as what you did for Mars, but that's okay, because a day on Jupiter is only 9 hours, 55 minutes and 30 seconds, so it spins on its axis a lot faster. Okay, so applying the sharpening effect on top of our new images, and here we go. Wow. 
How beautiful is that? Not only are the bands of Jupiter gorgeous, but the opposing orbiting motions of the moons is a stunning display of the universe in motion. We are witnessing a celestial ballet take place through the help of a 200 pound telescope that the likes of Galileo could only have dreamt of. In fact, what can only be described as by far the coolest aspect of all of this is that if you look closely at the two visible Galilean moons, then you can even make out a faint hint of their colors. On the lower left, we can see this yellowy orangey tinge. That is Io, the most volcanic world in our solar system. Thanks to Io's lower gravity and its intense volcanic activity, its lava fountains can shoot 300 kilometers up into space. Now that would almost be far enough to reach the International Space Station from the surface here on Earth. And then the other moon, which seems to be more of a greyish icy blue color, is widely regarded as one of our best chances of finding life elsewhere in our solar system. This is Europa. So there we go, a mind-blowing level of detail for such a cheap telescope. But now I'm going to do something even crazier. I'm going to try and image a couple of galaxies and an immense cluster of stars with this telescope. So to help me out, I've purchased a focal reducer. With the help of this little attachment, I'm going to reduce my focal ratio from f10 to f6.3, which in short means that under the same exposure times, objects will now appear precisely two and a half times brighter than before which is a huge plus, allowing me to try and tackle the Needle Galaxy, a perfectly viewed side-on galaxy, which is a super cool, rare perspective of a galaxy. It makes it seem super neat and tidy, with a slight but noticeable bulge around the center of it, where likely lies a supermassive black hole, helping keep this massive collection of stars together. But just to remind ourselves of what a galaxy generally looks like face on, here's my shot of the Pinwheel Galaxy, with its long spiraling arms. And then lastly, I've decided to try and image one of the gems of our night sky, the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules, Messier Object 13. This immense collection of over 700,000 stars is an easy target for amateur astronomers. These stars are packed so tightly together that some of them often collide and produce new stars. Our nearest stellar neighbor is about four and a quarter light years away. Meanwhile, these stars are on average just 0.1 to 0.3 light years apart. So close in fact, that any planets orbiting these stars would suffer from highly chaotic orbits and therefore have a very slim chance of forming any life. Which is extra interesting considering the globular cluster is about 11.65 billion years old, making it almost as old as our galaxy itself. So just out of interest to give you all a reference point as to the quality of this 200 pound telescope, here are shots I captured of the Pinwheel Galaxy and the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules through a 2000 pound Celestron 8 inch Edge HD telescope and a 0.7 times reducer with the same camera as the 200 pound C5 telescope and its 50 pound 0.63 times reducer. Obviously the images from the 2000 telescope are better, but are they 10 times better? Where would you rather invest your money? Let me know what your final thoughts are on the 200 pound C5 telescope in the comments down below. As far as I'm concerned, I am very impressed by its quality. It really surprised me when it came to imaging the planets. The scope is very lightweight and that's why I've now mounted it alongside another one of my telescopes. I've attached a link to where I bought the telescope and accessories from in the description down below, but fair warning, the telescope has recently gone out of stock. I'll be sure to add a note to my link once it's come back into availability or when there's another seller selling it. Thanks for watching and make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this in the future. I'm Damon Scotting and this was astronomical.